so maybe you could let us know um, a little bit about uh, the dangers um, about. Sure. Well, um, so when Jeff and I were doing the score and, and we spoke to Nora, you know, and I think one of the paradoxes of storytelling and, and of music making is that um, it's often the most specifically set uh, stories and, and, and instruments, the ones that are set in a specific place geographically and on the other axis of time. So in this case, late 19, uh, the 1990s, Afghanistan, the stories that are that specific often touch most people, the most universal. And so it was important to Nora and, and to us that we kind of honor the, um, the setting of the story and rather than having some quasi oriental music, we wanted to use actual Afghan players and, and research it correctly and in the same way that they did all their research um, to really understand the music, the instruments, and and then take that knowledge, of course, and turn it into a film score because ethnomusicology isn't necessarily a film score. So, but, but it was necessary to come to that understanding. Um, originally, we Jeff and I had planned on actually going to Kabul and recording there, but um, the situation became quite uh, deteriorated last year, and so we decided to do it remotely. We ended up um, getting in contact with the, with Dr. Sarmas, the, who started this school in Kabul about uh, 15 years ago, just I guess after the Taliban was um, pushed back, um, called the um, National Institute of Music Afghan Afghanistan, something like that. What is it again? <laughs> the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, that's it, sorry. Oh, reverse there. Um, so he began this school and he had contacts for these players and so on. Um, that we were able to um, work with. And so, and a lot of them were recorded in kind of uh, very homemade ways. For instance, the main kind of flute that you hear all the way through the movie is it's called a tula, which is kind of the, the, the flute of Afghanistan. It's a transverse bamboo flute, like a Indian bonsri. And um, the guy who played that played that in his bedroom, um, recording into a little microphone. And so, you know, that's kind of how we, we cobbled this together, and the choir, which is uh, such a was an amazing experience. And, you know, Jeff and I began the session at for us at one in the morning here, or something went till four, um, and for daytime over there, and the girls in their afternoon, um, and it was really amazing to to work with them and to think that, you know, not only are they um, going to school, but they're um, you know, they're learning alongside of boys and they're learning music in a place where not everyone believes that that is something that should be possible. Um, and yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, Dr. Sarmas, who had the kind of courage to start this school, and of course he was hated by the Taliban and people of, of that ilk, and uh, they threatened his life, and, and a few years ago um, there was a concert in the French embassy in Kabul and a suicide bomber during the performance of, um, of his students got close to him and was able to um, set the bomb off and um, Dr. Sarmat luckily was not killed but um, he lost most of his hearing so the irony of a man who you know is kind of single-handedly um, keeping the music of Afghanistan alive and, and passing it on to the next generation, ironically, can barely hear it himself. So that's the kind of situation that is there. And, and it's also the kind of, um, you know, it gives us that reason and the, to see this kind of dedication and courage um, in, in the face of threats like this and adversity and suppression. Um, so it's kind of just such an honor for us to be able to um, work on a film where these voices literally are heard, these voices, these little girls that are the same age as Parlana. Um, so that was something that was very um, important for us to be able to help support and, and bring bring into the film the literal voices of, of the people that this story um, springs from. 